Welcome back to the Jack Swarbrick Show. I am sure you have all heard the term, the Notre Dame family. Well, our next guest is the man in charge of making sure it is easy for the Notre Dame athletic family to stay in touch in many different, enjoyable, and productive ways. Branos became the executive director of the Notre Dame Monogram Club on St. Patrick's Day in 2014. The 2001 graduate of the Mendoza College of Business is one of the most decorated baseball players in Notre Dame history. The Irish infielder earned Big East Rookie of the Year honors in 1997, earned first team All Big East honors three times, was the conference's player of the year in 1998, and also earned third team All-America honors from three different organizations. But we are sure his proudest achievement was being named the Monogram Club Team MVP in 1999. Brant started 179 straight games during his Irish career and finished with a 368 batting average, 46 home runs, and 170 RBI. Selected by the Detroit Tigers in the sixth round of the 1999 draft, Brant played nine seasons of professional baseball before serving as an assistant coach at, yes, Michigan, and then moving on to work with USA Baseball for four years. It is somehow appropriate with the World Series going on literally around us that we have Brant us on the Jack Swarbrick Show this week. Brant, thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. 368. I, I had forgotten that if I ever knew it. The question is, do you think you could hit Rachel? You know, um, I'm not going to answer that question. I was fortunate enough to be invited to bring a friend to practice uh, yes, he, day a few he weeks ago. Yes, he out there. He hasn't I, lost a beat. Well, I made he sure hit I, the, He hit the furthest home run I've probably ever seen. Uh, Off you? No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely Soft not. toss. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, like on a tee. But oh, okay. now I'm not sure I want to face him. <laughs> That'd be interesting, you know? It's, uh... I, I mean, the furthest home run I have ever seen off of our softball field. <laughs> I was at a game a few years ago where, who was it, crushed one to right, went out on the street. I mean, it just went forever. It was, it was stunning. It was I wish I could remember who hit that. Um, the coach will tell me. Got to narrow it down I... She'll be mad at me for forgetting. <laughs> um, but, it, I mean, it was literally, as soon as she hit it, everyone just stood and sort of what, Majestic. was a gape. Yeah. yeah. But, no, I think that would be a great battle, you know. It's, um, there have been some great uh, match matchups like that. Yeah, I'd I, I, be honest with you, I'd need a, a lot of, Lead time, uh, <laughs> stretching, uh, hamstrings, uh, you know, aren't, aren't what they used to be. But, uh, yeah, we'll work on that. He, he's throwing you under the bus a little bit because I've been trying to get him out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he has yet to come. So he's just trying to find anyone yeah, else to I, step I, in I, for I, him. I get, no, I get no shot. The distance of the softball mound to the plate. I don't know if we've ever gotten into this discussion. No. But the geometry of softball is so screwed up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's just, definitely to the pitcher's advantage. It is. And, and because they don't make you guys be in contact with the rubber when you release the ball. Yes. You know, yeah. you, 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 you stay connected you, to the you, ground the entire time. So it's as far as you can get as out. As far as you can slide, right? Mm-hmm. So you've, 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 you've slid three feet closer and you you know the the release is so much further up my goodness you can almost hand the ball to the batter you, i think it's around 38 feet by the time you release the it, ball and it reminded me so i faced coach gump and uh it reminded me of when i faced bk kim a long time ago of that release point sure. and trying to the whole trajectory was was different and uh I, I i have a i already did but i have a lot more respect for for those hitters that, you know, there's, there's no hitters left and right in softball. But for How about those the pitchers? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm a, I'm a position player at heart, so I can never give <laughs> too much respect to the pitchers. Doesn't, you know? doesn't want to give too much credit. Yeah. We, 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 we'll get to your current job in a minute, but that reference <laughs> um, made me think of something we've never really talked about, which is in your in, in your baseball journey when you were in the minor leagues, who, who were some of the people you did play with or against that we might know? Oh, gosh. It's a, it's a pretty good list. Um, I, it's funny. I was just watching the World Series, and I, I'm always still rooting for the old guys that are still kicking around. I saw Coco Crisp up there, and we, we uh, squared off in double A. He was with the Blue Jays. He was Covelli Crisp at the time. Oh. Hadn't, hadn't earned that Coco yet. But, uh, um, gosh, you name it. Uh, a, lot of them, a, a lot of them got me out. Uh, I'd like to say I helped a lot of them uh, take that final step to the big leagues, uh, and then a lot of a lot of great teammates and friends. Um, uh, I was I was my my seven year old now. He's he's a, he's a big time fan of baseball and of course loves the loves the Cubbies. And so um, uh, they were uh, and, and was watching the playoffs. And Adam Jones, my last year in pro ball, I was in AAA with Seattle, and Adam Jones was this 21 year old uh, center fielder that couldn't get out. And uh, Mariners. Uh, Unfortunately, for their for their sake, uh, traded him to Baltimore. But uh, 
that's kind of the full spectrum. And, and Adam's yeah. obviously an established. Coco to Adam. Yeah. Uh, w- whether it's a name we'd know or not, who's the toughest pitcher you ever faced? Well, BK Kim for sure. And I faced him as a collegian on the collegian national team. Was he, he was pitching uh, for, for the Korean national team at the time. And then uh, a few instances in, in AAA. Um, and uh, just deception uh, was tough. I faced, uh, just because it's the most recent, uh, Tim Lincecum in probably a second uh, – second to last start ever in, in, in AAA in the minor leagues. And uh, this is when his arm was still live, and mm-hmm. he'd, he'd bring that fastball 97, 98, and that breaking ball and fastball on the same plane and just marveled at kind of that, that deception and power. Uh, but a lot of guys. Again, Jack, uh, a lot of guys I helped, I think, get get over that last step. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. <laughs> what is so deceptive? Because – I feel like the ball, you can see it for a lot longer compared to softball. I just don't understand it as quite as. Well, you know, the ball's smaller. Yeah. That helps. Um, but what, I think, what makes uh, the difference between the different types of pitchers? I, yeah, it yeah that, that's, that's a good question. Um, you probably asked the wrong guy. I made it a lot more difficult for myself. But um, there's speed. There's the best pitch in baseball. I always tell, I tell these young arms, these uh, parents that ask or whatever, that, you know, they want their kid to throw the breaking ball, the slagger. The best pitch in baseball is a changeup. Because it's it's, it's fair on your arm, but it's the most deceptive pitch to a hitter, consistently deceptive pitch to a hitter, um, and it's a pitch that you can le- make the least amount of mistake in throwing, for for an off-speed pitch too. Um, so I think that any any guy that had three pitches that he could throw for strikes um, were the difference makers at that at that next level. Trevor Hoffman made a career off that changeup. He did. That was, yeah. It was uh, for, for a reliever to make his living on that. My Padre guy. Pretty yeah. interesting. That's right. Absolutely. Well, now um, we're fortunate to have you here running the Monogram Club. And so let's, uh, let's recap for everybody what that is and sure. what that involves. Monogram Club is, is our conduit for our former uh, Monogram winners, student athletes, trainers, uh, cheerleaders, managers, uh, and video technicians uh, back to, to Notre Dame, back to Notre Dame Athletics and their, their unique experience uh, as a monogram winner. And um, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for us as, as a club and as, as an organization to continue to uh, provide that, that conduit and to see where um, our, one, our many wonderful members and, and monogram winners, what they are doing in, in life and, and whatever that may be, and find a way to, to connect them to our current student athletes. I think that's been the most rewarding aspect of, of my particular position is is finding all of these stories and, and knowing a lot of them that exist, but finding these stories of where our monogram winning alumni want to be involved and can and help our current student athletes through career discernment, through uh, w- whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very versatile, I think, in, and should be in that regard is finding those opportunities to, to keep our monogram winners engaged with uh, not just Notre Dame athletics, but the university as well. You also, uh, through your efforts, provide some very tangible benefits to our current athletes beyond beyond the mentorship and some of the uh, career-related things you do. There, there, there are ways you help them sort of very directly. Absolutely. Our, our resources um, um, from our members are able to provide a lot of neat things. And, and uh, you may or may not know from the jacket ceremonies and the monogram awards and, and things of that nature are all uh, provided by our monogram club members and, and their uh, uh, kindness and, and wanting to be a part of the, the club. Uh, we have uh, a, a long-standing uh, scholarship, the Brendan Bullen really a scholarship fund for the sons and daughters of monogram winners that uh, end up attending uh, Notre Dame. Um, our catastrophic relief Mike Heaton fund has also kind of uh, embodied that uh, a teammate for life mentality where when a monogram winner or their immediate family uh, comes upon hard times, there, there is a resource. There's uh, an opportunity uh, for immediate help and relief uh, to that monogram winner or their family too. And then we uh, look to be really creative and continue to support many of uh, the team in- initiatives. Uh, we've uh, developed a really strong partnership with Student Welfare and Development and the Career Center and providing this wonderful resource of our monogram winners in various career fields and various levels of, of industry um, and putting that resource for our career center and, and student welfare and development to, to get in front of our student athletes. And that's something I think we'll continue to build upon. Um, and through this hundred year exercise that we've had, uh, I think that's something that's resonated a lot with our membership. Well, so you do know, we do love and get excited for and really appreciate the gifts that we do get each year. It's an, it feels like an accomplishment every time we get the jacket or we get our monogram blanket and um, we're very appreciative of it. And it's, it's a cool honor to be able to have. 
No, it's great to hear. And, and I remember that day myself, a uh, kid from Seattle that was, was told it was a, a little colder here and that, and that monogram jacket served as my first uh, true winter jacket and, and then some. Do you remember your uh, monogram jacket ceremony? I do. I remember it very well. One of my teammates um, actually gave the speech, Carly Wester. Carly, yeah. It was a great speech. Um, and some of our family flew out. My family d couldn't make it, but um, it was it was really fun to be there alongside other athletes on other teams, too, who um, had completed their first year mm -hmm. of um, college athletics, which I think is the hardest year to get through just because there's so much adjustments and um, it's a learning curve. And so to get that jacket, um, I think everyone looks forward to it's known as the Rudy jacket, too. <laughs> so um, we all love that. Yeah, for our listeners who may not know, what we decided to do several years ago was to take what was a uh, um, at, at best an inconsistent system for distributing uh, the letter jackets uh, to turn it into a ceremony and uh, to, to bring each student athlete up on stage and present the jacket and uh, typically there's a former monogram winner who comes back uh, to speak to the awardees and some of those have been brilliant mm -hmm. brilliant speeches and as you say a reflection by a by a current student on uh, on their experience and what it means to them. So uh, it, it has become a very special night on the calendar. It's kind of our inauguration, like, into the Notre Dame family, it right. feels like. It's like you did your first year, like, you got through it, and um, it only gets better. And so what I've enjoyed, too, is, is you, you talk about those first years, but a lot of those first time and only monogram winners are those that have had such a remarkable journey um, as a walk-on or, or really competing to earn that, that valuable playing time or opportunity to earn that monogram in their senior year. So it's the, the full spectrum of the story, too. And for us, it's, it's our baptism into the, the monogram club, whether you're uh, fortunate enough to earn four monograms or in the case of a, you know, Pat Connaughton, six or eight, wherever he earned, <laughs> uh, or, or one, you're, you're part of the monogram club family. Um, and I was, I was honored when, when I, was, uh, I was given an honorary one. Uh, surprised by uh, the student athletes and, and and others one night so yeah it's a, it's a great tradition speaking of monogram winners we've got a one of the most notable of all time returning uh, returning this weekend uh, to visit us tell us a little bit about that very excited to have justice Alan page back on on campus um, and the the monogram club will, will be uh, uh, bestowing the the Edward moose Krauss distinguished service award. Uh, a well well deserving uh, award for for justice page he's back on campus and it's just it's just wonderful timing um and having justice page back celebrating 100 years of the monogram club um and, and i can't think of a, a better example that embodies uh not only what what the criteria for that award are but just for what it is to be a notre dame student athlete and a, and, and a, a true notre dame man and uh, had, a, had a chance to spend some time already earlier today with justice page and just just remarkable um just to be in his presence and, and one of, if not the most humble people you'll ever come across as well. Pretty remarkable given all he's accomplished. Oh, absolutely. Life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he has done it all. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the Moose Cross Award and what it, you know, how, what it signifies, how you decide who gets it. Right. The Moose Cross Award is, is our highest honor. Uh, it's awarded to a monogram winner and, and somebody um, who embodies the, entirety of the spirit of Notre Dame. Uh, and it's not necessarily for what they accomplished in, in the realm of competition or in their respective sport. Um, it's really about what they have been able to accomplish beyond Notre Dame, beyond the walls of Notre Dame, in, in the spirit of Notre Dame, through service, uh, through community, um, and, and excellence in, in, in all of those uh, factors. And, uh, you know, I don't think this is surprising to anybody. There's a very impressive list of, of recipients, past recipients, but there's also a very impressive list of, of uh, Notre Dame alum and, and monogram winners that could could and and, and maybe will one day uh, be bestowed upon the award. So uh, it's a tough job for our, our board of directors in, in sifting through the many qualified uh, folks, but when um, you're fortunate enough to have uh, a Justice Allen Page, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer no and, and an easy decision for us. And what uh, what will his weekend look like? What sorts of things will will he be doing while he's on campus? We've uh, we've got a lot of uh, things in plan. Tomorrow he'll be meeting uh, with the law school and, and as part of their Klein's uh, chair series, uh, and a lecture and a Q and A over at the law school, uh, which is a if if you spend every time with with Justice Page, um, uh, he, he he's proud of what he accomplished in, in football. Um, and he's proud of what he, he's accomplished in other aspects, but the passion is in the law. And um, 
only thing surmatched by that is obviously for his family, but the Page Scholarship Foundation as well. So he'll meet with a law school tomorrow. We'll present the award uh, during a lunch on, on Friday. Uh, we'll have student athletes uh, attending and coaches as well. It'll be a great gathering. And then uh, there'll be uh, part of our recognition of, of the 100-year anniversary uh, throughout the weekend. We'll recognize uh, Justice Page during the, the football game as well. Well, as I say, can't can't think of a more deserving uh, representative of this university. As you say, all he accomplished, but but to go to the law school while being the yeah. first defensive player in the NFL to get the MVP award, you know, being being part of those great teams with the Vikings, getting to law school, practicing law while he was still playing, uh, it doesn't happen anymore. No, and and, and the, the avid marathon runner too. Uh, Joe Rustic, one of the past presidents of the Monogram Club and, and played football here. Uh, I think he was in, in mini camp or rookie camp with the Bears towards the end of Justice Page's NFL career. And uh, he, he, he tells me the story that during, you know, summer camp and, and uh, here's Justice Page and he after after a two a day or a practice, he'd, he'd go for his 10 mile run to, to stay in that marathon <laughs> form. And, and and Joe Restick was looking at him going, who is this guy? What, where, where do you get that energy from it? But it it's defined, I think, as passion throughout life. And he retired from the, the Minnesota Supreme Court last year. But, uh, you know, he 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 adamantly says, I've got so much more I want to do and accomplish. And that's that's just incredible, really. Well, he's everything, everything we we think is embodied in the monogram. And so thank you for for creating this opportunity for him to come back and visit with so many people on campus. I know I'll get to spend some time with him, Father right. Jenkins will, and uh, it's it, it's a great honor for all of us. So so thanks for doing that. And your board will be in town as well, right? The board, our, our fall board meeting uh, starts on Friday, and that's always an impressive group. My, my job in that is just to get out of their way. Uh, so many passionate and and, and uh, really uh, impressive people that comprise that board. And uh, it's a great opportunity for, for us to kind of talk about some of the initiatives and programs that are in place. Um, they're always wanting to, in, in the true Notre Dame spirit, wanting to make things better. Um, they love any interaction that they, they can have with the current student, popu student athlete population. And then one of the uh, kind of mantras from the 100 year anniversary is what are the next 100 years of the, of the club going to be? How are we going to continue to be this tremendous resource for both student athletes and our alumni? Um, and it's really a fun, fun time. Busy weekend, but it'll be great to have them all back here on campus. So are the members of the board uh, across all like the United States, me old alumni? Correct. Uh, all sports represented, all eras of sports, um, and we try to do that by design and, and making sure we have the true diverse representation of Notre Dame athletics, not only through sport, uh, gender, but also the different eras of, of Notre Dame athletics. How did they become part of the board? There's a nomination process, um, and then through our governance committee, um, we, we follow up and, and vet them to some degree, but it's, I tell you what, there's so many impressive candidates and, and former monogram winners uh, that all show that undying passion to want to stay involved and, and, and kind of go above and beyond in their service to Notre Dame. So it's a tough, tough decision. From my experience with some of the monogram um, members, um, they love reaching out and helping. Like they go out of their way just to um, talk to us, give us guidance on um, career paths, which is really helpful. Right. And we've got some great softball representation on the board with Jen Sharon Richardson and yep. uh, Linda Cohen Wilson. Uh, now and and uh, they're passionate and and uh, I know that uh, Coach Gump has them heavily involved with you all, especially when you head out west to play as well. And that's that's great. Uh, Notre Dame is an, is a national university, obviously, so it's true that uh, and it should be as our board should be representative of that as well. I think we got a future board member here. I, I, I tell you what, that, that the I softball early? the softball program has has produce some quality board members here. Deanna does, in fact, do that. Mm -hmm. Great Brings great great uh, student athletes here and, and de develops them in an all a host of ways. She whips it. us into shape. Exactly. That's the exactly. <laughs> bottom exactly line. the sort of program we like to build here. <laughs> well, Brad, thanks again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for all the club does. And uh, uh, we look forward to uh, joining you and honoring Justice Page this weekend. Thank you. Looking forward to it. We'll be back in a minute. We represent the greatest university in the world. Let's carry that pride tonight onto this field and let's play for Notre Dame. And let's play for Our Lady. That's how we're playing today. I don't know what next week holds or the week after or three weeks down the road, but tonight, that's how we're playing this football game. And caught beautifully. What a play. 